We have with us today, Carlos the Medium. He's taking part in a study over at the University of Maryland, comparing the brain of those who claim to have psychic or mediumship type abilities versus schizophrenia, and also compared to those who do not have any of these awarenesses. But what if we all have this ability to connect and receive these messages? Maybe we all have access to this tool that can help with insights and our well being. Hope you enjoy the talk. Hit like below if you like it. If you can learn to trust that silent voice that's there, uh, your intuition, whatever you want to call it, or trust that you're part of a, a, a universal um, consciousness, I believe, in my opinion, that it allows you to make better decisions in your life. I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm more connected or less connected than anybody else in, on this planet. I would say I'm, I'm, just, I'm one and the same as everyone uh, in terms of that connection to spirit, to, okay. and to that collective energy. Um, I, the difference I would say is that maybe I, I trust it. You, you started off in the Navy, is that right? You had been in the Navy? Five years, yeah. It seems like a very different uh, kind of a mindset. How did you um, make, make that switch? Like what put you on this path from going in the Navy into being now a medium? And that's your well, full-time yeah. thing, I guess, right? Yeah, it, it is full-time, uh, uh, you know, uh, career I, I, I'm in now, profession. But um, yeah, you don't actually, I always tell people, you don't actually go looking for it. You don't go knocking on this door. This is the door that knocks on your door. Uh, this is this is something that knocks on your door, and uh, you know I didn't ever expect to go into mediumship full time, uh, or even didn't even know about mediumship. I've heard of you know that type of work, if you will, psychics, intuitives, all that stuff, but I didn't really ever was never on my radar growing up ever. Um, but how I how I got into this work was uh, it was a series of health issues, health complications uh, that I went through uh, with headaches, stomach issues, other things like that. And in search of uh, finding answers uh, I, and having some uh, out of life experiences, if you will, kind of like near death and other things. Really? Wow. Um, okay. It kind of opened some doors, but also I, uh, I essentially I, I came across the right people. And when I, when I did, these individuals were, uh, they were bona fide mediums and they were like, you know, you're meant to do this work one day. And I was like, no, I'm not. And they were like, yes, you are. And, uh, you know, I thought there were, I thought kind of my, my mentality was that they probably tell this to everyone. And, uh, you know, they said, oh yeah, you're gonna do this professionally one day. And uh, they, but they also brought me a lot of evidence and stuff from certain loved ones of mine that have crossed over. And I was like, I don't know how they got this information or how they even were able to obtain this during the session. I was like, this is just, this is just mind blowing. And um, one thing led to another and, uh, but it kind of, in my own heart, in mind like the dots connected that the reason I probably the reason I went through all these difficult experiences with my health and other things in my life was to be of service and to open that door and uh, you know I, I followed mm -hmm. my heart and uh, it one thing led to another and you know uh, this path is a very slow path in, in uh, development mediumship development and it kind of for me was a bit accelerated so it just very natural uh, most of the people I know that have gifts such as that they, they had early child, like they, they kind of knew when they were younger, or they, they could see things or experience things or heard things or, um, and, you know, of course, oftentimes they shut it out because it's too weird for them or they found out, you know, it wasn't a, um, people didn't really approve of it. So they kind of shut it out, but then down the road, something happened, opened those doors back up again. Uh, they embraced it, you know, for whatever reason. Right. Um, but it, it sounds like, you didn't have those experiences when you were young. You were in the Navy, and now you're not. You're doing something very different. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I even got my, I even went and uh, uh, obtained my bachelor's degree and then graduate degree uh, before even getting into the mediumship. So it was not like I was ever intending to go in this path. And, uh, you know, I had a pretty much a normal upbringing. We didn't really t talk about these kind of things. Um, right. You know, so uh, it's totally... Uh, outside of what I would have envisioned, you know, in high school, they would have said, what do you think you're going to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? I would never would have said, oh, I want to do this. No. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I hear you. Uh, the best way I can explain to you is my mentor said to me once, he goes, um, it, it, it's, you're like one of those people that, uh, you know, he, he discovered me in a way, but, uh, you know, he said to me, it's like someone that's uh, been in an accident and, uh, you know, he's in the hospital and he has to learn to walk again. This is what this lifetime is about. It's like learning to walk again. And then before you know it, you're going to be running before you know, and you're going to be, uh, you know, sprinting and doing a marathon. It's so it's, you just, you just got to get used to going back into who you are and that this is energy is part of who you are in this lifetime. You just don't remember it. So, and that's kind of how it was. I mean, I uh, was able to, uh, from start to finish, well, it's never finished this, this growth, this development, but, you know, I started the journey, I would say late 2011 or so, or, or yeah, around 2011. And, uh, you know, what, nine years, almost 10 years later, um, I'm, I'm doing this professionally. Wow. That is you know, very quick. I, I understand that you're now part of a, a program, a study, uh, the University of Maryland with uh, uh, Dr. Gold. Is that right? Yes, he's a, uh, he, he was the, uh, the principal investigator. He is the principal okay. investigator for this study. It's through the University of Maryland, uh, the, uh, I believe the Baltimore campus, uh, UMBC. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's, okay. it's, a, it's, it's a research study. Uh, and I can go into more detail if you would like from what I know. Yeah, I definitely lo love to hear about that. I think it's impressive to me that even more so since you um, are just just nine years ago, 10 years ago, discovering these, uh, these gifts of yours. Um, but it's impressive to me that you are regarded in, um, you know, a fairly high authority, I would think, for someone to say, hey, come in and let's do these studies and we want to learn about the brain and we want to compare that and figure out. Um, so it's, a, it's the basis around schizophrenia versus uh, mediumship and why one is, you know, kind of a, a good thing and the other one isn't so beneficial. So how I discovered Dr. Gold, Dr. Gold discovered me. I was at a show okay, and uh, he left a little note. I think he came to talk to us at the booth. Uh, and I had a booth worker working with me, a friend. And, uh, you know, he said he was looking for, you know, any some participants who would like to uh, be a part of a research study. And the participants that they were looking for were people that were in uh, that claimed and I use the word claimed because you know it, it's it's a claim it's not something that you can prove through science uh, that have psychic or mediumship um, phenomena or abilities and uh, when so after a few months I, I reached out to him because I just wanted to explore what was going on with me as a person perhaps what's the science behind this from their end and or you know, and also using um, you know any uh, tests or examinations that they could provide to tell me like why am I experiencing this? And uh, from what I uh, took from um, having the conversation with Dr. Gold and uh, the staff there, so they kind of want to see how you know one compared to the other. Um, I was going over the study notes, but they don't necessarily in these uh, uh, in these notes they don't necessarily use the words um, mediumship. They're more using the term uh, uh, people who experience auditory hallucinations or have unusual beliefs, but have not been diagnosed with schizophrenia or, or related disorder. Um, and they're also investigating people that do not have any of these. So they're trying to, okay. but- uh, And are they just mapping, using the MRI to map the brain and to see where, when you're, I guess, tuning in to see what part of the brain is tuning in or um, has some sort of uh, change in it? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, that's one of the studies. Um, they're also having you do pattern work to see how your brain, um, uh, to measure, I guess, certain, uh, uh, you know, cognitive abilities and other things uh, that the brain, uh, that we, how we utilize our brain. Um, okay. They also have you, um, you know, um, they, they wire your brain with the EEG, Gotcha. And yep, and they're also seeing what is triggering the part of the brain when they're using that. Um, and they have it's just different exercises that they utilize uh, from visual to hearing to uh, you know uh, to recognizing patterns using your brain. Um, gotcha. And I, from what I you know, and I have no science background in this, so I, I understand. What I would I guess estimate that uh, they're trying to measure what are how are let's get people with uh, diagnosed schizophrenia, how are they performing in these studies? Um, 
and examinations versus people that claim to have uh, psychic or mediumistic abilities. And that's been going on for how long now? Well, I started in 2019 um, in April. Um, no, I'm sorry, June, I think, May or June. And I finished the, the first part. And then I had to take a break for a few months to take care of some other things. And then uh, at the beginning of the year of 2020, I was going to start over again. And not start over, but finish off my um, my uh, my part of the, the study. But then okay. COVID happened. So I had to take a year break. And then I'm just finishing right. up the, the final uh, details of it. I've done all the MRIs and all the different examinations that require. I just have to do some paperwork for them. From the paperwork I received, the, uh, the, the research consent form that they were looking towards about 120 participants in the study. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, and from the last conversation I had with the staff, they had about 20 or 25 um, uh, psychic mediums or mediums uh, okay. that were participating. You believe that everybody on, on some level, to some degree, has this ability to uh, tune in, tap in um, to, the, uh, uh, to the collective, I guess? Is that mm -hmm. sure? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can use that term, yeah. Um, I believe that one of the things you do is you, um, you know, help people learn that skill. And in what way does that benefit your average person? I would say it benefits the average person. And um, one, uh, you have more knowledge of something that you did not in the beginning. Um, okay. A better understanding. So it makes you more open-minded um, spiritually. Um, the, the other thing I would say is how it would help someone. It, it, if you can learn to trust that silent voice that's there, uh, your intuition, whatever you want to call it, or trust that you're part of a, a, a universal uh, consciousness, I believe, in my opinion, that it allows you to make better decisions in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so decision making, it helps. Um, I think you're because life will present a lot of um, challenges along the way. And what I've noticed is along with this, along this journey, uh, that uh, just being, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm more connected or less connected than anybody else in, on this planet. I would say I'm, I'm, just, I'm one and the same as everyone uh, in terms of that connection to spirit, okay. into that collective energy. Um, I, the difference I would say is that maybe I, I trusted more. Gotcha. You know, I trusted more. Um, and uh, it allows me to make better decisions about life and also towards how I treat myself and how I feel part of uh, the big picture. But I don't Great. feel I have any added advantages than the average person. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they, they don't tell me, you know, when I'm at the grocery store or something, do this, do that, eat this exactly. And then, you know, this will be fixed. Or when I go to the doctors, you know, and I'm complaining about something, they don't tell me, go oh, tell the doctor to give you this, that, and that, you know, and that'll resolve this, you know, they, 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 they steer clear of it because here again, I am here to live my life just as much as you are and everybody else. And I have to go through gotcha. the same. Lessons so they can't just life. hand you the answers. That would not be. No, uh, no, that would be different. That wouldn't, right. Right. You know, so, so they got to keep you all, guessing. So they got to keep it vague, and uh, yeah, keep those yeah. questions rolling. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, you know. Um, I think once you learn to explore that uh, intuition and that heightened connection that we all have, although it's very subtle and we may not think it's there, um, when when situations come that require uh, trusting that inner voice, that connection, I, I feel that uh, they come through when they, when you really need it. It's kind of like uh, bail you. Uh, it's kind of like uh, what's it? Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, what uh, you got? Was it the landline or uh, lifeline? Or... Yeah, lifeline. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I've been in situations where maybe like I wasn't supposed to go somewhere, and I heard a silent voice in my head say something: "Don't go tonight." And for whatever reason, I wasn't supposed to go, and it, it turned out you know it was a good thing I didn't go. So how how do you think this? How do you think it works? The the mediumship well from just people in the industry that, uh, you know, that have been in this work for a while or a long time, and, uh, you know, uh, from what has been passed down, but also from my own experience, uh, what we're dealing with is energy, right? Energy, mm -hmm. vibrations, okay, right. vibrations. 
and uh, our loved ones and those that are in spirit um, are vibrating at a certain frequency, okay? Uh, as you and I are vi vibrating at a certain frequency right now. Um, right. So spirit's vibrating at a certain frequency. It's a very subtle vibration, but it's there um, among us. Uh, so we, as the medium or the, the individual, have to raise the vibration in that space, uh, either okay. through meditation or raising positive thoughts or bringing invoking love uh, because if you think about it spirit is uh is is love okay uh, it is positive energy um yes that that collective energy um and uh you know so we raise the vibration we also raise the vibration with the person we are connecting for uh, our client or the audience as that vibration is raised, um, those, uh, those thoughts lead to manifestation, which creates energy. And uh, that, uh, you know, think of us as like an antenna, okay? Um, the more sensitive the antenna, the more it will pick up, uh, you know, from the station that it's, that it's connecting with. And spirit, since it's vibrating at a much higher rate and frequency, will lower its energy, uh, the medium will meet that energy in the middle through its signal uh, that it's broadcasting okay. out and uh hence the term medium okay um is that right is that where that comes from yeah yeah because the medium is uh the individual is raising like, their vibration yep you meet right in the middle somewhere interesting um, i didn't know that okay that kind yep. of makes sense yep and then okay. uh, when when you read when you link up there when you establish a link it's very subtle it's not like you're gonna be like it's not like they're say. Uh, they're not going to, they're not going to, you're not going to hear something say, oh, contact established or anything like that. It's a very subtle <laughs> connection. And uh, you start picking up bits and pieces, vibrations um, again. So you're mostly going to get it through feeling uh, because that takes the path of least resistance. Okay. Um, and then you might, if you're developed, you might receive uh, visuals about the person or the situation before they pass or about their life. They want to share that with you. Um, and then you might hear uh, certain, uh, you know, um, things through your, your your own ears um, through audio, auditory, okay. and um, such as names, maybe initials, some, something relevant. Um, uh, and yeah, and then you just kind of put those pieces together, and you you deliver the information you get. And uh, it's it sounds very easy as I explained it, but it's it's somewhat complex. Yeah, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I've heard it described as. Uh, um, Kind of playing charades you know sometimes you're given a picture and you yeah. need, need to kind of try and interpret that picture so it's going through a bunch of different filters yeah and 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 somehow on the back end of the filter you need to act you know hopefully um um project an image that actually makes sense to your person that you're working with and oftentimes that's hard to do you know um that's just kind of what i've been told <laughs> yeah it's true um it is like charades. Um, it's, you know, you, you get an image. It's not going to make sense to you. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you deliver that, that message, that image. Um, sometimes the person doesn't know. Or sometimes it's completely wacky to them. Sometimes it, it hits, it hits their, their heart and just like, wow, I know what this means. Um, sometimes people are like, let me sit on it and I'll maybe let you know down the road what, it, what, I, what I thought that represented. Um, you know, once you... I guess once you're more seasoned in the work, it just becomes you, that tr that trust you develop and that connection just becomes more reliable. Uh, hmm. It's just more consistent because you're right. you're able to differentiate the subtleties that come through uh, versus. I'll give you one example. But I was this is a long time ago, like five years ago. I was working at West Virginia at a fair, and uh, I was reading for a lady, and I felt there was a husband that came through. So I just said, there's like a male here. It feels like a husband. She's like, yes, yeah, she confirmed me it was. And I, you know, I, I brought up a, 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 a couple of validations for her. I don't remember. But what I do remember is that as I was talking to her and connecting for her, I saw a little uh, white uh, general aviation plane kind of fly by in my own mind, my third eye here. Um, and I didn't think anything of it. And I just, I just dismissed it because I still was, I still was learning and stuff, growing, mm -hmm. developing. And then uh, I, I, we finished the conversation. She goes, yeah, that was my husband uh, that you brought through. She goes, um, he died in a small plane crash. He was flying his own plane. Oh, wow. So I missed it. <coughs> yeah, I missed the connection. Uh, I missed that, that piece of validation because 
you know, uh, I was shown a quick image. It was really quick. It wasn't like it was like I saw someone flying an airplane and, you know, it was asking for like 10, 20 seconds. And they were like, tell her I was in the airplane and I passed. You know, it was just I just saw a little airplane fly by. And that's how it works. You but it was confirmation it. for you as a, yeah. you know, as a student, I guess. And we're all, yeah, you know. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So, mm -hmm. wow. so you just put the pieces together and, uh, you know, you just trust what you get. And that's probably the hardest part about mediumship is trusting because it's yeah. all, it's mostly feeling that's going to be coming through because that's the, the path of least resistance tells us that, you know, they're going to take uh, the easiest route to deliver the most information. I think the real challenge, um, I mean, for me, because I, I do try and, you know, I, I think most of us do have that inner voice um, and I try and listen to mine. For me, the issue is distinguishing between that helpful knowing vo voice or my ego. Are there any kind of tricks of the trade or just tips as to what we should focus on, what we shouldn't focus on? Well, um, one thing is, uh, you know, that uh, that source of information is never going to give you any, anything negative. So it's always going to be positive. It's always going to be beneficial. And uh, it's going to be it's, com it's coming from a higher place. So it, it's it, it's for the best of intentions. Um, so always anytime you feel like you're receiving anything negative, it's not coming from that source. It may be coming from your ego or from somewhere gotcha. else, you know. So ignore that stuff. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're not going to tell you, hey, um, I don't know. Uh, they're not, you know, they're not going to say, uh, you know, some, tell you something negative about your life or someone else's life. You know, right. you know, they, they I, I don't, in my opinion, I don't feel there are uh, negative things to negative lessons upon us. I feel they are there are opportunities for more growth. Um, I do, I do believe in positive and negative. Um, there's a dualistic energy to the universe, but um, I don't feel like it comes from a bad place from the universe. I feel it's a place to, you know, for an opportunity to grow and develop, yeah, I agree. you know, mastery, self-mastery, because that's what we're here for. Uh, we're all hearing, we're all sharing our light in a different way. Um, some share it more than others. Some don't really share it at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, and I think it's just, it's all part of that uh, collective consciousness, uh, that infinite source that we call God, uh, that brought us all here. And, uh, you know, to shine that light upon others and others will shine that light upon us. And that's where the growth comes in. So what are some of the services that, that you, you offer and help people with? Uh, primarily, I stick to mediumship. Um, you know, that's, that's what I primarily dedicate myself to. Um, you know, with those mediums, mediumistic services, uh, mediumship services, I, um, I blend uh, the way I've been trained and the way I've developed. Um, I blend a, a little bit of numerology, some, uh, some, some psychic in there. So, you know, intuitive and psychic ability and also a mediumistic connection with uh, their loved ones. And I just piece it together and I just go with the flow. So I usually start with numerology. Then I start seeing, you know, intuitively psychically what's going on in their energy. And then I start connecting with their loved ones from there and then delivering messages and then, you know, uh, that are relevant to the person. And then I close it up and we're done. Wow. And uh, also, uh, also now doing uh, some pet communications, um, connecting with people's pets and also connecting with people's pets that are living as well, doing that as well. And uh, lately wow, okay. been doing a lot of um, mentorship, so training students um, to develop their own abilities and stuff like that. So we have a, a mentorship program. So and anybody that's looking to you know further develop or is curious about their abilities, uh, it's a beginner's course. So, uh, uh, we're, we're starting that. They can always reach out to me via email uh, at uh, carlosthemedium at gmail.com. Um, 